Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be taking a look at something a little bit different. It's the Peter Dennis signature collection of ECW from Wow Fun Games. Okay. So here I have the Wow Fun or World of Fun Wargaming Miniatures. Um, this is the ECW starter set uh, in 25 slash 28 mil. Um, lovely little box. Gold relief on it and all around the side as well. Um, bring history to your home is their catch or tagline. These are produced in uh, Romania and I believe they also have a setup in um, America as well. So inside your box when you order these you can choose to get them with standard bases uh, with custom bases to match your whatever game system you're using or with no bases at all. If you do order bases, they come with these, um, I suppose they're wooden, with a textured print on them. So, sort of uh, medium green, with a bit of flecking in it, very close to a lot of flocks I use, so should match most of your terrain. Uh, I won't go through every sheet, but I will show you a couple of sheets here of the standees. So here we have a blue coat cavaliers and just to show you the artillery come with a larger base. And the artillery aren't laser cut acrylic but wood, which makes sense because when you punch out the gun, instead of being see-through, because it's going to be straight on to you, um, you actually have then the dark wood tone. So it's very close to the, the bronze they've chose for the gun. I will do an overview of the whole set when it's all punched out and assembled. However, if I just shift these to one side, and we'll take a look at the infantry first. A bit of a crack in the sprue there, but it stopped at the cut line which is good. So these are the Peter Dennis signature collection where they've been redoing Peter's paper boys in this uh, acrylic. As you can see, you have musketeers firing at the ready, at the ready and at the ready. You also have three pike and a colored party. They are printed front and back, obviously side on is going to be the acrylic. They do have the tabs so in theory what you can do is put them into the base and then when you're finished take them out of the base and put them flat again so storage is fairly easy and they store back into that attractive little box we've seen. Now I have several of these already for ancients and I had an issue with the pikes, which they don't have here. So when I got my initial ones, and um, I got them with when they were only starting off as a company, it was part of the Kickstarter, so they would have join points up here, which meant when you went to remove them from the sprue, you could sometimes snap longer spears. But as we can see, they will not. They will theoretically just pop out. Let's try that and see what happens. I don't want to break these because they're really nice and I want to play a game with them. Um, whereas normally I would do it and be damned. There we go. So as you can see, you can see the green through there. They've actually had the, the gap between the legs cut. So very nice. That is two. For people wondering about size, they are Despite looking very slender and slim, uh, they are 28 millimeter tall. They are true 28 and properly proportioned, so you will not see huge ham hands. You'll get a very realistic looking force on the tabletop. Again, similar for the cavalry. I bring infantry in beside the cavalry. You'll see proportionately spot on. 
and they are three abreast. And again, lovely detail from Peter Dennis's, uh, both, well, both his ink work and his colouring, his, his illustration is gorgeous. So you can have your Cavaliers as well. Before I start splitting these up and uh, I'm getting ready to show off what the armies look like when assembled, I thought I would just show a couple of other lines they do. They sent these as a little sample so you can see how the others look. So that's the Peter Dennis collection, but they also have their own range and their own range are standalone. So unlike Peter's where they are ranked, these are individual. So I have uh, Indian skirmishers. And as you can see, similar size, but if I uh, close in here, they have a little bit more, um, I don't want to say cartoony proportions, but they're Well, I suppose heroic is what they call it these days, where you have the larger hands and, and faces, although their hands are actually relatively well-sized, but their, their heads are larger to make them more distinctive on the battlefield. These can also be ranked up, um, but they do do things like cowboys and uh, Plains Indians and things like that, so you can do some sort of more modern skirmish uh, as well as mast, rank and file. The other thing, which is quite nice, is that all of these can also be realized in 15 slash 18 mil. And here we have a set of American Revolution figures. So as we can see, a strip of both um, British Redcoats and Continent, uh, Continental Congress Army. Let's see. So as you can see here, the uh, both British and Continental Army for the American Revolutionary War or the American War of Independence depending on how your bread is buttered. We have some ensigns up here. Again, the individual basing rather than strip basing, which is nice because it means you can make your figures go further. If I drop in our 28 mil beside them again, you can see they are about half scale. And if I drop in a ruler, we can see Let's pick this chap, that he is 18 millimeters to eye level. So pretty much spot on for 18. So what I'm going to do is sit myself down and clip these all off the spray. Okay, I'm back with them all popped out and based up. And in fact, you should hopefully be looking at how they look arrayed on the tabletop right now. Um, what I will say is when popping them out, uh, the vast majority of the army, so the regiments of pike and musket and cavalry, uh, took me about 40 minutes to pop them all out because I was being careful not to break any pikes. The cannon uh, took about the same amount of time to do the eight cannon as it did to do all the infantry. So let's say an hour and a half, we'll round up an hour and a half to get two armies from out of the box to on the tabletop. Uh, and they look absolutely terrific when set out that way. Um, especially when you, you look at things like the cannon, they have rather than acrylic used wood for the barrels so that you don't have the see-through part when it's coming straight onto you and you can set the men to be forward or backward, so you can actually have them working around the uh, cannon itself. And I think they look absolutely terrific. Now, if you do look sideways on, um, 
you will notice that they don't have much depth to them. That is the fact they're standees. You just have to live with it. It is the look you get when they're coming forward or backwards. Um, I think Peter Dennis's illustrations are absolutely fantastic. Uh, so it's not a major issue to me. He's been doing standees and, and um, paper soldiers for years now. So he has got the technique down to make them look absolutely gorgeous. And in most cases, you and your opponent will be seeing either the back or the front. So the loss of definition side on is not a major deal breaker. Um, and when you've got things like Fairfax and Charles the first uh, leading their forces there, I mean, they look terrific. And it really gives you that sense of um, the, the Pike and Shot era with all of the, the serried ranks. Now, if we actually take a look at some of the models up close and I bring in a ruler, you'll see that they are actually 28 mil to eye. They feel like they're smaller because they're realistic. However, if you bring in a 28 millimeter figure, uh, let me see. So I bring in this Irishman. You'll see actually to eye level, they're about the same size. He's up on a little nod there. There we go. So about the same size as a standard 28mm figure. Obviously, he's a bit thicker proportioned. He takes up the same room as two men. But if he was straight on silhouette wise, you'll see they are absolutely spot on. So for 28mm figures, I think the, the standees are great. They do do two types. They have the uh, signature collections like St. Peter Dennis. But they also have their own range where they are individually based for um, their own style games. They're a little more cartoonish. Little The heads are um, a little more um, oversized. So you can spot them on the tabletop, whether you're, these are some Indian skirmishers, but they, they could equally be Wild West or um, uh, Ancients. So they have a, a whole variety of their own. So if you like the, the rank look, I think the Peter Dennis collection is excellent. If you want to play about with different types of games where you may not want them ranked, uh, the individual basing uh, for the, the Wi-Fi standard figures uh, offers up some differences, um, but also uniquely good. Where they come into their own for me are the smaller scale, the 18 mils. So if I bring in some of those, there you can see beside the 28 mil, they are equally well detailed, uh, very distinctive on the tabletop. And the interesting thing is because those are 28 standees, they're very thin, but with these being 18 mil, the actual depth of the figure isn't far off from where it should be. Um, you're not losing as much. And then what I've also seen some people do, and what I've, I've very quickly done here with a black marker, is to actually go and either do the entire outline in black or actually colour it. So scarlet jacket, we have a scarlet sleeve, black boots, black tricorn, do the, the brown for the musket, the, the rest of it. And so when you look at it, you're not seeing this invisible side. In actual fact, you just see an 18 mil figure. It will mean that it will take a bit longer to get a tabletop worthy if you're going to do that extra step. Uh, I'm quite happy to, uh, to play with them as is. Uh, I think it's an excellent way of encouraging people to get into uh, historic gaming uh, for very not just a, a smaller buy-in, but also the time constraint between getting your, your miniatures and getting them on the tabletop. You can do that in very quick fashion. And uh, the starter armies and, and the, the sets like that, you can buy the individual units, but if you get the, the sets, then there's a rule set accompanying it uh, from Andy Callan, which is um, just a very simple D6-based system. But again, for people looking to with historics for the first time rather than finding one of the, the 
um, more robust rule sets that will require several days to read through. Uh, I think getting a set of this and then getting involved with the uh, rule set that Andy's done is probably a much better way of doing it, especially good for introducing children, I think, to uh, historics. So there we have it, uh, the y fun range. It is extensive from antiquity through to the American Civil War and also uh, fantasy gaming as well. So skirmish and ranks are all available in both 18 and 28 mil. And I do think it's well worth taking a look at. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. So there you have it, uh, a fantastic set to get started into the English Civil War. Uh, in fact, any of the sets are really good for getting started into any of the time periods. Certainly standees are ones that are a, a bit marmite. Not everybody's gonna like them, but I think to encourage people to get in and play and not have that barrier of having to paint everything first. Literally an hour after I was done opening the box, everything was on a table and I was starting to take pictures. So um, it is a very, very quick way of getting good looking armies onto the tabletop. If you want to take that extra step with the smaller figures, uh, or even with the 18 mil or sorry, 28 mil stuff, an edge, uh, the outlines to the, the similar colour, so whether it's flesh or wood or whatever it happens to be, to remove that um, clear side-on look. You can do that. It will take you a little bit longer to field the armies, but I think it's worth it. And certainly for the 18 mil stuff, uh, it makes them practically indistinguishable from other 18 mil sculpts from a distance. And when you're playing with 18 mil, it is the overall look you're looking at. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think of Wow Fun, of their standard line and their signature collections as well. Uh, is it one that you think you may join in in the future? I personally am looking to get 18 mil Napoleonics for them to finally get started. Um, but yeah, I'll see you in the comments below. And until then, bye bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.